All right, welcome into another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, and we are jumping in to our second little session on Psalm 119. We are in the Hebrew letter Bet, and so um, it's kind of funny uh, how the name for our alphabet came from the uh, first two letters, Alf, uh, Aleph and Bet. Alphabet, alphabet. Um, also, kind of could it came from the Greek alphabet because they have an alpha and a beta um, uh, letters. So, kind of a little bit of both. Um, anyways, <laughs> random, random trivia for you today. And now we're jumping in to the second letter, the second section of Psalm 119. Again, uh, 176 verses. 22 sections of eight verses long so we're on the second one of those and um the first section was on obedience so it was kind of our first theme so let's uh let's check out this section and see where it takes us so verse nine how can a young man keep his way pure by keeping your word i have sought you with all my heart don't let me wander from your commands I've treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Um, I don't know if any of you out there have ever done the <clears throat> the Pledge of Allegiance uh, to the Bible. <clears throat> and uh, so your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you is part of that uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I grew up in a Christian school, and uh, so we did the Pledge of Allegiance to the Bible every day, and so... Uh, drop in the comments if you ever went to a Christian school and so you know the pledge to the Bible or maybe Sunday school or something like that. Um, Lord, may you be blessed. Teach me your statutes. Come on, we, we need to learn. We need to learn his statutes. They don't just come automatically. We don't just understand them automatically. With my lips, I proclaim all the judgments from your mouth. I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees as much as in all riches certain like valuing the decrees and the way that's revealed by his decrees more than riches i will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways and i will delight in your statutes i will not forget your word so uh, I think that's an important verse, and let's go green highlight there. It just feels right. This feels right for a green highlight. So how can a young man keep his way pure? So young man, youth, lack of wisdom, lack of understanding, just because of youth, right? Like there's there's some level of... Um, not foolishness necessarily, but there's some level of like, whoops a daisy, you know, that you give people some level of flexibility on when they're younger, because you just know, they just don't understand you, you like, you hope that they will ask for help, but they don't always ask for help because a lot of times they don't even necessarily recognize that they need help. Because they can't see they can't see the danger, they can't see the potential situation coming. Because they have no context to understand that it's coming just because they're young, like they're inexperienced. And so <clears throat> how can a young man keep his way pure by keeping your word, by by keeping tightly to by keeping focused on his word? So, you know. They always say, like, have a messed up Bible and you won't have a messed up life. Have a messed up life, you probably don't have a messed up Bible. Well, I use, like, three Bibles, so I've been able to keep this one in uh, pretty good condition. But, uh, and also, you know, with digital Bibles and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Anyways, um, definitely staying in the Word every day spiritual discipline of time in the word um but not just but not just getting in and reading and, and walking away and being done right because the next verse indicates the intensity that's kind of required i have sought you with all my heart don't let me wander from your commands and i and i like i appreciate here 
that he's saying, I've sought you with all my heart and then still asking for help to say, please, please don't let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. And I'd like to present to you that this isn't, you know, um, you know, I've often, well, obviously the, the pledge of allegiance to the Bible is your word. I have hid in my heart. Um, and so, but this, I, I really like the feel of, I have treasured your word in my heart. It's like, not only is it, you know, not just speaking about quantity, but quality, the quality of it in your heart. Because you can have the word of God in your heart as far as a memorization uh, or meditation type of thing can be. But when you choose a certain predisposition in your heart towards the word of God, then it makes a huge difference. Because if you're honoring and treasuring that word, it's... It's like I really enjoy the practice um, when when churches will read a section of scripture and then they'll say, and this is the word of God. Like sometimes it can feel like, oh, you're you're so religious, you know, like, why? Why would you say that? You know, like, duh, like you just got done reading the Bible. Of course, it's the word like, of course. But there's something so critical for us to continue to remind ourselves about the word of God, the power of the word of God, the value of the word of God, because the word of God doesn't return void. It accomplishes what it's meant, what it's sent out for, what it's meant to accomplish. And the reason that we have to continue on is because we're forgetful. Um, And there's so much of it. There's so much of it. Literally you could, uh, you know, one chapter, if you read one chapter a day, you will read the entire Bible in about three years because there's about uh, around 1,100 chapters. I don't have the exact number right off the top of my head. I want to say it's 1,089 or something like that, but <clears throat> um, somebody's Googling it as we speak. <laughs> but um, so you can, I mean, it's just a lot of the Bible, right? So that's just reading one chapter a day. Um, and it takes you three whole years. Um, so again, I have treasured your word in my heart so they may not sin against you. So we want to do both quantity and quality, uh, when we're hiding God's word in our heart. So Lord, may you be blessed and teach me your statutes. So Lord, let, let me not just read your word. Let me not just, you know, know it, but let me understand your statutes Now, teach me your statutes so that I can understand uh, what you're asking me to do. I can understand why, uh, why those things, um, and I can understand the way, like verse 14, I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees. Teach me your statutes and help me understand the way that's revealed through your decrees. And I think that's a really cool revelation there that his decrees actually reveal something greater, deeper uh, to us. It's not just like the uh, don't, don't murder, you know, but there's, but through don't murder, you recognize the value that God puts on life and the protection that that is that he's, he's protecting us from each other. He's protecting us from ourselves. When he makes this law, this decree, this statute of do not murder people, he's establishing the value of human life, which then has incredible implications across industries and cultures and everything. And so understanding that like, yes, he has a decree that says, do not murder. And maybe that's a terrible example. I don't know, but we'll go with it today because that's what we're feeling, all right? <laughs> but so uh, I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees. I rejoice in the way that is revealed by the decree that we are not to be people that murder each other. 
because it makes me understand the way of valuing human life, of respecting people simply because they're created by God, regardless of where they come from, their socioeconomic status, their dem- dem- demographics, any of those things, right? Like we want to make sure that we honor and respect each other because God created us and God said we're valuable. So we all are regardless. So I rejoice in the way revealed by your decrees as much as in all riches. And I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. You know, just recognizing the need for how, like, you know, sometimes people talk about meditation and they talk about meditation as in emptying your mind um, and then just being kind of in that state of like open, you know, that would not be reflective of the Christian Uh, definition of meditation Christian meditation would actually be the other way around we actually would choose to fill our minds with something uh, preferably the word of God Um, so I will meditate on your precepts I will fill my mind with your precepts and I will think about your ways and so again the word meditate uh, comes from where we get the word rumination uh, rumination is like the concept of uh, chewing the cud. So, um, interestingly, you know, animals that chew the cud, they have multiple stomachs, and the the stomach is responsible for differing levels of digestion. This different stomachs uh, draw different nutrients out of the food. So they they eat the food, they swallow it, and they kind of like burp it back up, essentially. It's such a fun combo, um, but they chew it again and they swallow it again and it goes into another uh, another stomach and it gets uh, different nutrients pulled from the food and so on and so forth, depending on the number of stomachs that they have. And that is essentially the same kind of concept that the psalmist is going for here is I want to meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. I, I want to digest it and then I want to bring it back up in my mind and I want to digest it again because I know that each time that I do that, I'm going to get something new. I'm going to get a fresh uh, sense of where you're going with this Lord so that I can then take it to verse 16 and delight in your statutes and not forget your word because now the Holy Spirit can come and utilize all that content that we have deposited in our heart. Now, the Holy Spirit can do whatever the heck he wants to do because he's powerful and good. But how much, like, don't we want to make ourselves available to the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts? And so let's give him as much content as possible to work with in our heart. And so then it will be clear when he's speaking to us and trying to guide us and direct us in all truth. So today, the word of God and us treasuring the word of God in our hearts and not just treasuring it, but then um, working it, work it into our hearts. So meditate on his precepts. How does a young man, how does an old man, how does a young woman, old woman keep their way pure, but by taking heed unto his word. So let's, we want to grow in righteousness and holiness as, as a people, as the people of God, we want to grow in that. And now we know that a key way for us to grow in that is to meditate on scripture, to fill our hearts, our minds with scripture, to go over and over and over, to meditate on it, to digest it, to really pull all of the nutrients out of the word of God. And that will help us to understand uh, his precepts and to walk in the way revealed by his decrees. So I hope you are encouraged today to dig a little deeper into the word of God And uh, let's go. Let's have a great day today. Let's be uh, centering our hearts on the word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.